You want to talk about anxiety? I'll tell you about anxiety. I have anxiety right this second. I was racking my brain. What do I talk about? Um, this is for an anxiety project. I was, I'm more, it's not that I'm palpitating, but what goes on with me is um, the line between terror, anxiety, excitement, enthusiasm, they all blend into one. I used to get panic attacks when I would get in an elevator or a subway car. All of a sudden, one summer in New York City, way before 9-11, I could not get in an elevator. My heart would start palpitating or a subway and I realized I was suffering from claustrophobia. I had never had claustrophobia for, before. This happened when I was about 35. 35 years go by, I'm not afraid of subways. I'm taking subways my whole life. One day, a subway pulls up and I can't move. I get an anxiety so powerful that what happens with me is that I just shut down. It's like an entity. I'm serious. Anxiety is, for me, is an entity that comes into my system. I could not get on an elevator. I could not get on a subway. And now, 18 years later, I'm off of Prozac. I was put on Prozac and Clonopin to combat anxiety. I'm off of both medications. I just juice things. And I juice things with a furor, not the furor, but a fura and an anxiety when I'm juicing apples and oranges and pineapples there's so much tension that goes into it because I have no more medication I just eat raw foods and I eat juices I drink juices and now I have so much going on in my life because I am dealing with things just through prayer meditation and screaming I am now just terrified. I'm conscious for the horror. And that's the great thing about an acceptance of anxiety is that you're just conscious for the horror. You realize there's a lot of beauty in life and there's a lot of horror in life. You can see a beautiful French bulldog in a park and then 12 seconds later, you could see someone lunging at, a, at an elderly person with a knife. And that's all in the same park that I attend. Now, of course, I'm kind of kidding, but I, I just want to say that all my fears, one time in New York City, I was accosting people. I was having such a panic attack that I felt like I was going to pass out, like James Gandolfini did as Tony Soprano in The Sopranos. I felt like I was going to pass out, and I was going up to people on, on the streets of New York saying, please talk to me. And do you know how fast those people ran seeing like a middle-class white person saying, please talk to me? That doesn't fit in their you know, in their little matrix of thoughts. Like, why is this person coming up to me saying, please talk to me, he looks okay. I wasn't okay. I checked myself into an emergency room that day. I called my shrink who said, get out of the emergency room. They're going to throw you in the psych ward and you're never going to get out. So I never went in because I probably wouldn't be out. Because who doesn't want to be in a psych ward in slippers playing ping pong? And, and, and eating pudding. I, it sounds good because when you're in a psych ward with slippers, ping pong pudding, and really high dosage anti-anxiety medication, you're not dealing with what I'm dealing with right now. I may go to the Edinburgh uh, Fringe Festival in Scotland, 26 shows in 28 days. I'm a stand-up comedian. You think that's not anxiety provoking? Everything's anxiety provoking. I hear, the, I hear the mailman coming and I'm thinking, oh my God, what horror is going to be in that mailbox. What bill that I should have dealt with. I think the key to being an anxious person is that everything has such gravity to you because you're insane. Things aren't that important.